An Introduction to Composting is a presentation by Kenneth Fall, an employee of a municipal solid waste facility since 2005. It is an attempt to cover the basic concepts of composting toward the development of a composting program at a public landfill. What is composting? Composting is the biological decomposition of organic wastes. It is a controlled attempt to harness a natural process creating the dark, fertile substance known as humus. Through the process of composting, we are building the soil. This is conceptually different from simply adding nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium to accelerate the food growing process. For once those chemicals are used, the soil bank has been effectively depleted. On the other hand, with composting, the humus not only gradually releases the nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium, but the enriched soil retains the ability to nurture future crops. A strong soil bank becomes an agricultural resource for the future. Anything once alive contains carbon. In support of this, we point to carbon dating, which is a scientific method of determining the age of an object containing organic materials. In science fiction, we hear the distinction between a humanoid carbon-based life form and a silicon-based life form, such as an android. Carbon means it is alive or it was once alive. The composting process is the combining of organic matter with oxygen and water, which produces the byproducts of heat, water, and carbon dioxide to form the final product of compost. The composting that has transpired over the ages is the same today. What works in the backyard compost pile is the same process when scaled up to the commercial level. Microbes are the key active agents in composting. The macronutrients of carbon, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium feed the microbes. The micronutrients such as cobalt, manganese, magnesium, and copper also feed the microbes. So then composting can be viewed as simply feeding the microbes. The two most important components in composting are carbon and nitrogen. This brings us back to the significance of carbon in composting. Carbon is the central element of composting, while nitrogen is the most significant other ingredient. Of the materials to compost, the browns have high carbon content. Brown is reference to the color of the organic material. This includes wood products, fruit waste, vegetable stalks, leaves, and peat moss, to name a few. The greens have high nitrogen content. Green typifies the color of this organic material, but not always. Alfalfa, algae, grass clippings, clover, hay, garden waste, vegetable scraps, seaweed, and manures are representative of this category. Manure is commonly identified with its nitrogen content, and the nitrogen is often connected with its combustible nature. Adjusting the CN ratio by increasing or decreasing the carbon in relation to the nitrogen enables us to control the composting process. If the CN of the waste is too high, add nitrogen. If the CN of the waste is too low, add carbon. Too high a CN slows the process, and too low a CN leads to a nitrogen loss in the form of ammonia. A compost calculator is helpful to calculate the CN ratio. A CN of 30 to 1 means 30 scoops of carbon material are mixed with one scoop of nitrogen material. An online compost calculator tool is available from Green Mountain Technologies. The phases of aerobic composting are mesophilic, thermophilic, 
and curing. Mesophilic is ambient room temperature to 110 degrees Fahrenheit, which lasts a few days. Thermophilic is 110 to 170 degrees Fahrenheit, which lasts a few days to months. Curing is moderate to ambient temperatures and lasts one to many months. Time frames may vary, but temperatures must be achieved to complete composting. PFRP means processes to further reduce pathogens, and it is taken from Title 40, Code of Federal Regulations, Part 503, Standards for the Use or Disposal of Sewage Sludge. Why the reference to sewage sludge or biomass? Because the components of composting may contain pathogens that must be neutralized to be considered safe. Specifically, Appendix B to Part 503, Pathogen Treatment Processes, reads, and notice the trio of fives. Using the Windrow composting method, the temperature of the sewage sludge is maintained at 55 degrees centigrade, 131 degrees Fahrenheit, or higher for 15 days or longer. During the period when the compost is maintained at 55 degrees centigrade or higher, there shall be a minimum of five turnings of the windrow. Bulk density measures mass per unit volume. Water is 62 pounds per cubic foot or 1.44 tons per cubic yard. Dry topsoil is 75 pounds per cubic foot, or 1.73 tons per cubic yard, and compost is 44 pounds per cubic foot, or 1,200 pounds per cubic yard. Lower bulk density usually means greater porosity and free air space, which means fluffy compost, and that is our goal. Free air space in composting is important because it not only affects the speed of the composting process, but the smell that comes from the compost. Water surrounds all compost. Optimal free air space is between 32% and 36%, as noted by Elliot Epstein in his definitive text, The Science of Composting. Odor is the most common reason that composting operations are closed down by regulators, so increasing the free air space is crucial in making the odors go down and the complaints go away. The smaller the particle size, the more readily and rapidly the compost can be broken down. For example, wood chips compost quicker than a 2 before length of lumber. However, exceedingly small particles the size of granulated sand will not allow airflow and would resist composting. Both mesophilic and thermophilic temperatures will be experienced during composting and should be kept about 150 degrees Fahrenheit. Too much moisture means that oxygen can't get in. Optimum moisture is 45 to 60 percent of the weight of the composting material. Microbes require moisture for life processes, heating and cooling, and a place to live. If moisture is less than 35 percent, you can't feel it on your hand. Squeezing a small handful of compost is the standard measure of moisture. If you can see the moisture, then it is at least 35 percent. Moisture increases while aeration decreases. When is it done? It is finished compost when it has finished curing and has reached a stable temperature. More specifically, it is done when it can grow plants. The proof of the pudding is in the eating. And of course, it is done when it has been tested through lab and facility tests. Conclusion Composting is dynamic. What you do and how you achieve it depends on the characteristics of your end product. Only way to lower pile temperature 
is to lower pile height. Temperature probes help prevent fires. Moving compost from point A to point B is the only way to put out a compost fire. You may do something wrong, just fix it. Always have a plan B. Do you have a plan B? Feed the microbes and let the microbes do the composting. Philosophy of compost. Feed the soil and the soil feeds the crops. A plant grows where compost goes. The U.S. Composting Council says compost, the sustainable solution for soil, water, plants. The U.S. Composting Council has a seal of testing assurance for those who qualify. This presentation was compiled on April 6, 2015.